This week, I watched a video. It was an internal intern talk Harry Shang gave Microsoft research interns several years ago. In the Q&A section, one PhD intern asked him a question. The question was, you did research and led the research group, and now you are doing product and is leading the product group. What is the biggest difference, you say, from research and product? Harry Shang's answer summarized one key part of doing product management, and that aligns very well with my own experience. So in this video, I'd like to talk more about that and share my thoughts with you. Let's get started. For those who are new to my channel, I'm currently a PM at Microsoft. I have been working here for more than six years, and I publish my PM learnings and experiences every week on this channel. Subscribe if you don't want to miss my future videos. And for those who don't know about Harry Shang, he was a co-founder of Microsoft Research Asia and then corporate vice president of Bing Product Group, and then executive vice president of the AI and research group before he left Microsoft. Let me first show you his answer here. He said, doing research and doing product are so different. Research is all about uncertainty. And it is certain there is no need to research anymore. It is all about what's new. Product is all about what's useful. You always need to balance three things, features, quality, and deadline. If you are a good manager, you can get two out of three. Almost no one can do all of three that are globally optimized. Therefore, in product group, very often, you have to think about cutting things because you have to meet deadline. He also said he always encouraged the product team to leverage the research team because the research team has the time that product team doesn't have. With time, you can think deeply and you can really take your time to think through all the scenarios. And that is the biggest difference in his opinion. I never did research, so I cannot comment on the research part, but what he said about the balance of product features, product quality, and deadline for product management is definitely true. In fact, to get a full picture of all the balances, there is actually a fourth part that I can add here, which is resources or cost. If you are a product manager, someone comes to you and asks, let's build a product that beats iPhone with one developer within one week. You definitely will think this guy is crazy and let him get out of your office. This is an extreme case, but you got my point. The reason it is called a balance is because you usually cannot get all of them at the same time. You have to balance, compromise, decide which parts are more important than others and prioritize them. Let's take a look at a few real examples in work. You are working on a feature with one developer, and you have committed to your leadership that the feature will be shipped to customers in a month. Now, the developer has some family emergency, and he has to take two weeks off. With this, you'll definitely miss the deadline. What will you do? Let's map this case to the balance framework. The resource we need is one dive, the deadline is one month, we have one feature, and the quality can be something like user experience, recommendation, algorithm, accuracy, etc. With the two weeks off of the developer, we only have half developer now, which means if we have to keep the deadline, we either need to add another developer to help, and that added developer must be as fit as the original one. Or we need to cut the scope of the feature if it can be separated to several phases. Or we might need to sacrifice the user experience or the other quality parts here. We can also check if the existing deadline is a real hard deadline. If it is not, then it becomes easier. Perhaps we can just push the feature out for two weeks. Another thing to note here is the adjustment you make for one project or one feature could also impact other projects in the same team globally as well. For example, in order to get this feature out, you need an extra developer added. But where does that extra developer come from? You have to consider what's the impact for other projects that the team is doing at the same time, and any further adjustment and balance needed for these projects. Let's take a look at another more complex example. You work with a team of developers and have several features ongoing. One day, your manager comes to you and says, we have a very urgent task from customer or from his manager, and we have to complete this task as soon as possible. What will you do? The first thing is to ask for clarifications for sure, like the reason behind of this urgency, the expectation behind this as soon as possible, more details about this task, and so on. Next thing is to evaluate the changes. 
whether you commit to this task or not at the end, it brings changes to your existing balance. That means you need to see if you can rebalance to take the change in. Let's say the new task is a new feature and you need to check each factor of this framework. For features, you need to compare this one with all other features that you are doing right now and confirm it does have higher priority than others. You know, urgency doesn't always mean higher priority. For deadlines, you can consider if you can buy the team more time to get things done. Well, make sure it is still acceptable by your customer or leadership team. For cost and resources, you can say if there is any chance to get extra developers, for example, ask help from partner team, or you know a new developer will be on board next week, uh, or one developer can be freed up from a low priority project temporarily. Or worst case, team needs to work late for one week to get things done. With quality, you can check if it is acceptable to get the task completed first with not that good latency and then improve in the next release. After considering all these factors, you should have an answer to your commitment. At the same time, you can also clearly share the impact generated to other projects your team is working on from this change. To summarize, there is no absolute right answer to how to balance. The decision needs to be made on a case-by-case -case basis after considering all factors. A framework here can help you think through all the possible adjustments and impacts. It won't give you answers directly, but it can guide you to a smart decision. From Harry Shang's answer, he suggested that if you are a good manager, you can get two of three from features, quality, and deadline. Keep this in mind. Balance doesn't mean you need to get all parts perfect. Balance means you need to understand the compromises you can make, your priorities, and to prioritize the more important factors instead of all of them. That's all for today's video. I hope you find it helpful. If you like my video, please give me a thumb up. And if you have any questions or feedback for me, feel free to leave a comment below so I can try to address them in my future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.